Hey, 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 happy Tuesday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com, of which I happen to be the Grand Poobah. Today is April 16th, 2019. It is a Tuesday. Today I am going to be sharing a little bit of a how to play, as well as review Kanban Driver's Edition from Stronghold Games. And uh, I have to say, this is probably the meatiest Euro game I have ever played. And that may not be saying a whole lot because it's not as if I play tons and tons of Euro games all the time. But this is a pretty pretty, uh, heavy mental lifting for some folks, especially when we were playing it for review. So that's going to come up in just a little bit. I've got plenty of news today as well. But before I jump into that, do want to point out, this is a live stream. So if you are watching live on YouTube, there is chat available. So if you want to say hello, maybe you've got a question, or maybe there's something about Kanban you want to get a little closer to look at, by all means, chime in and let me know. I will point out, chat is not on screen. It's one of the ways that I... Kind of keep some of these stranger commenters at bay, but I do pay attention to chat. So if you you type something in, if you say howdy, I will definitely respond. I also want to point out, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you check out some of the videos on the Gaming Gang channel and you like those, please subscribe. Don't forget to ring that little bell because that will not only notify you when there's a new video, but also tell you when... The stream goes live, which is normally around 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Today, I was a couple of minutes late uh, getting stuff together. Uh, One of the things is Kanban actually takes a while to set up. Not like, you know, Arkham Horror length of time to set things up. But it does take a while to set things up. So I, uh, I thought it would be quicker than it was. And then I needed to run upstairs, grab something to eat for dinner, of course. So, uh, unfortunately, started the show yeah, about two, three minutes late. So, that's no big deal. Anyway, I do want to point out there is plenty of news today. I know there are some folks out there who watch the show after the fact. They do not like the tabletop gaming news portion. If you are one of those folks, look down below. There are show notes at least uh, if uh, if you're watching this like an hour or two after the stream, it's not like I can put the show notes in there immediately as the show is running. I know there are a couple of people who just think that for some reason, you know, if the show finished streaming 10 minutes ago, those show notes should be in there. But they're not. Anyway, but uh, if you are not a fan of the tabletop gaming news segments, check out the show notes. You can jump ahead. Let Magnus pop it in. Yeah, and don't think we didn't notice your tardiness. Oh, yes, okay, all right. Oh, fine. Can I tell you? Hey, at least there's a show, right? Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, better better late than never, right? So let's jump into the news because I've got quite a bit of it because a little double dip from Stronghold Games today. Not only am I going to do the review for Kanban, Driver's Edition, But they've also launched their Kickstarter for the fifth and possibly final expansion for Terraforming Mars. It is called Turmoil, and I've got the dope. We all went out to making... I'm sorry. Let me grab a sip here. See, this is what happens when I'm racing around right before the show. Squeezing this news piece in, too, at the last minute. Yeah, okay. We went all out to making the 5th edition 
expansion for Terraforming Mars. It's the biggest, most involved and strategic addition to the game. And now it is on Kickstarter. You'll see a whole new side of the planet with the inclusion of new corporations, projects and global events. A new card type that affects each player and gives them something to plan for. As the name Turmoil suggests, political mechanics let you manipulate Martian politicians and control the incentives that they dole out. Players will vie for control of the terraforming committee, assigning delegates to nominate party leaders and ultimately electing the chairperson. Become the party leader and or the chairperson and receive increased benefits when a global event triggers. And we are including a special milestone reward for all backers of this project, dual layer player boards. New milestones will be unlocked every day. We've got a lot of promo items planned as your reward for backing. Terraforming Mars Turmoil is for one of five players ages 12 and up and plays in about two hours. There is a short video from Stronghold Games, but the music from it will set off a copyright violation. That's what I do ahead of time with these Kickstarter videos that I share. I upload them. You don't know they're uploaded because I'm not sharing it as a public video. And as soon as I see if I get flagged for a copyright violation, I either don't include the video or I look to replace the music. So... What I'm doing here is I'm replacing the music because there is no voiceover for this Kickstarter video. It's just images and text, and there was this bombastic music that unfortunately I do not want to get a copyright strike on my show for. So it's about two minutes long. Let's take a peek at the um, <laughs> suddenly different soundtrack and the Kickstarter video for Terraforming Mars Turmoil. All right, that was very, very weird because that video, um, for some strange reason, that video was not the right size. Uh, Led Mad is asking, is that Minecraft music? No, it is not. It is the music that I use for ambient music in the background is uh, all uh, copyright free or royalty free music from YouTube so that uh, I know that they won't flag me if I ever use that. So yeah, that was very strange. That video all of a sudden was not sized right. So, don't know. Anyway, you're pretty much seeing <laughs> this stuff from it anyway. One thing I'm pretty excited about is that this is going to include those dual layer player boards. So when you're dropping all your little markers on there, they won't slide all over the place, which happens to me a lot when I play Terraforming Mars. So that is very cool. So do want to point out, Right now, this did just launch, and the Kickstarter project is over 1,400% funded. That's right. And you can reserve a copy of the Turmoil expansion for a pledge of $34 through May 2nd. 
Uh, you can also pair it up with, uh, if you do not have Terraforming Mars, and I don't know why you would not have Terraforming Mars, you can uh, actually get that as well, the core game as well as the expansion. I think it's a $79 pledge. So, so there's that. That's coming. And I think it's the final expansion for Terraforming Mars. Because I know when I did my interview with Stephen Bonacore not too long ago, he was hinting that that would be the end. But, I mean, you know, come on. How, how much are you going to beat that horse, right? The horse isn't dead yet. Don't kill the horse and then beat it, right? So, there is a new title on the horizon from Arcane Wonders. And I've got the dope on Volcanic Isle. Although I have to admit, it's not a lot of dope and uh, not a lot of images. Long ago, Easter Island was once a vast continent ravaged by constant volcanic activity. I don't think that's true. The settlers of the land <laughs> raised Moa, gigantic monolithic statues to appease the gods and mend the wounds of the land. Unfortunately, this very act of sealing off craters and geysers couldn't cure their island, but instead caused an even greater disaster to unfold. Volcanic Isle is an exciting game for two to four players tasked with building villages and raising Moa across the continent. However, with each raise, the possibility of a volcanic eruption increases. Eruptions will devastate settlements and even remote whole sections of the board. At the end of the game, the player with the most thriving settlement amidst the chaos of volcanic activity and an ever-changing landscape is the winner. Volcanic Isle is for two to four players, ages 13 and up, plays in around 45 minutes, and it will carry an MSRP of $49.99 when it arrives on June 10th. Like I said, wish I had a, a little more information. This look, this looks kind of interesting, but then in a strange way, it sort of reminds me of uh, Escape from Atlantis. Survive, right? Isn't that it? Isn't that the title? And then what was the game that came out where it was... Uh, you had your, like, settlement and a volcano erupted and you were trying to trying to block off the lava flows and stuff like that. And, and one of the ways was with, uh, with wooden walls. I was like, really? It is lava, right? Wood burns... But, uh, gosh, I can't remember the name of the game. In fact, uh, I did a review of it and thought it was meh. And I remember the company wasn't real happy <laughs> that I was going to, like, eh, it's all right. It's nothing fantastic. Moving right along. Next month, Paizo Inc. will be launching a completely revamped and redesigned edition of their Pathfinder Adventure card game. And I've got the dope. Your adventure begins here. Belheim's tower has just collapsed. Its wizard is missing, and local kobolds are whispering the name of a long-dead draconic nemesis. And that's just your first day in town. This complete cooperative strategy game pits one to four players against monsters, perils, and traps as you become the heroes of Belheim. As the town's new champions, an unending world of adventure awaits. Choose your character's class, build a deck of equipment, magic, and allies, and explore lethal locations as you journey through an exciting fantasy tale. As your adventures continue, your characters add remarkable gear and breathtaking magic to their decks as they gain incredible powers, all of which they'll need to challenge more and more powerful threats. This core set includes the storybook and cards for the Dragon's Demand adventure path, as well as a modular core for infinite scenarios that allows you to control the difficulty and speed of play. Supplement your experience with the Curse of the Crimson Throne Adventure Path, Character Decks, the Pathfinder Society Adventure Card Guild, and Pathfinder Adventure Card Game Accessories, all sold separately. The Pathfinder Adventure Card Game is for one to four players, ages 13 and up, plays in around 90 minutes, and will carry an MSRP of $59.99 when it arrives next month on May 29th. Then there's the Curse of the Crimson Throne expansion. The King is dead. Long live the Queen. Corvosa, although for some strange reason I want to keep saying Carcosa. Corvosa is cursed. 
that none of its monarchs shall ever die of old age or produce an heir. Wow, that's pretty tough to be able to rule that place then. The metropolis teeters on the edge of anarchy. It needs heroes that can face down crime lords, rioting mobs, insane cultists, virulent plague, undead hordes, scheming devils, corrupt nobles, barbarian chieftains, and ancient and forgotten evils that seek to dominate and sacrifice the city. This expansion to the popular cooperative Pathfinder Adventure card game. That's uh, kind of being a little conceited there, right? Because I thought the new re redesigned edition is just coming out. Don't know how popular it's going to be yet. I'm sure it'll be pretty popular. Anyway, it pits one to six players against monsters, perils, and traps as you save the city of Corvosa from the threats both ancient and new. Choose your character, build a deck of unique equipment, magic, and allies, and explore lethal locations as you journey through an exciting fantasy tale. As your adventures continue, your characters will add remarkable gear and breathtaking magic to their decks as they great gain incredible powers, all of which they'll need to challenge more and more powerful threats. This set includes the storybook and cards for the Curse of the Crimson Throne adventure path. It requires the Pathfinder Adventure card game core set and does expand the maximum number of players to six for that set. That's pretty sweet. Curse of the Crimson Throne will carry an MSRP of $49.99 when it also arrives on May 26th. Cool. I have, I gotta be honest, I've only kind of messed around with the Pathfinder Adventure card game on my iPad. Uh, just a little bit. I have not gotten really, really into it. I have to admit, my best friend Elliot Miller over at voiceofe.com, he plays the adventure card game quite a bit solitaire. So I'm, I'm curious. I have reached out to Aaron over at Paizo to see if we can check this out. Um, don't know. I have no idea because uh, I just found out about this today. So, uh, all depends. All depends on what, uh, what he thought of the uh, first look and unboxing of the Starfighter Beginner Box that was on Friday's show. So, this does look kind of cool. And uh, I find it interesting that they've redesigned the adventure card game about the same time as the second edition of Pathfinder is about to hit. So, it's kind of interesting. So, you might be enjoying the final season of HBO's Game of Thrones. Well, this is the time to start uh, getting into the fantasy role-playing campaign if you'd like, because the latest bundle of holding should be right up the fans of the show's alleys. Here's the dope. Enjoying the final season of HBO's Game of Thrones? This is the time to start a tabletop fantasy role-playing campaign set in Westeros using a Song of Ice and Fire role-playing. The official RPG from Green Ronin Publishing, based on the best-selling fantasy epic A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin that inspired the Game of Thrones series. Designed by Robert J. Schwalb, Shadow of the Demon Lord, SIFRP focuses not just on characters, but on noble houses that wage war and stage intrigues in the great game where you win or die. This Song of Ice and Fire bundle brings you almost the entire line for a bargain price. For just $14.95, you get all five titles in the starter collection, retail value $72, as DRM-free PDF eBooks, including the complete A Song of Ice and Fire role-playing core rulebook in both its Game of Thrones edition and its pocket edition optimized for tablet use, as well as the campaign guide and chronicle starter and the introductory adventure, Wedding Night. And if you pay more than the threshold price of $26.80, you'll level up and also get the entire bonus collection with eight more supplements and adventures worth an additional $70, including the Night's Watch Sourcebook, the full-length Chronicle Dragon's Horde, three Chronicle System Rule Supplements, Out of Strife, Prosperity, which is New Holdings, and Spark to Powder, Gunpowder Rules, and Chronicle of Sorcery, and three creature guides, Woodland Creatures, Mountain Terrors, and Desert Threats. 10% of your payment after payment gateway fees will be donated to the charity designated by Chris Promise of 
Green Ronin Publishing, and it's the Union of Concerned Scientists. So, of course, once again, you are helping out a uh, cool charity. So, I find it interesting that the Game of Ice and Fire, or I should say Song of Ice and Fire, uh, role-playing system for Game of Thrones is called the Chronicle System, and Green Ronin produces other books for it because we know there's no gunpowder. There are no guns. There's no musketry or anything like that in Game of Thrones. So I thought it was kind of interesting that it seems like you're getting almost all the Game of Thrones related supplements plus some additional goodies too. So pretty good deal. Pretty good deal on the PDFs. Okay, and my final news piece is also role-playing game related because Arcanum Worlds and Modifius Entertainment are teaming up to bring a new Greek mythology-infused adventure supplement to 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. And I've got the dope on Odyssey of the Dragon Lords. At the dawn of time, a war between the gods and titans left the world of Thalia forever changed. Thousands of years later, the first mortals arrived, carried by ship and dragon. The dragon lords were the champions who overthrew the titans 500 years ago and forged the Oath of Peace. But the power of the oath has waned, and now the titans seek revenge. You are one of the heroes called by prophecy to end the conflict once and for all. Poets will sing of your deeds for centuries to come, if you survive. The Kickstarter for Odyssey of the Dragon Lords 5th Edition Adventure Book is now live and ready for your support. Odyssey of the Dragon Lords is an epic 280-page Greek myth-inspired adventure book compatible with the 5th edition of the world's greatest role-playing game by Arcanum Worlds. Odyssey of the Dragon Lords contains everything you need to run campaigns in the epic Greek myth-inspired world of Thalia. I'm just taking a guess at the pronunciation including an overview of the world, magic items, monsters, and a diverse cast of Greek myth-inspired allies and villains inspired by legend. Uh, I shouldn't use inspired twice in the same sentence there, folks. <laughs> the world of Thelia includes an overview of the history, factions, kingdoms, and laws of the Forgotten Continent. Learn about the gods, the titans, and the legendary dragon lords. There are new monsters. It includes a bestiary of over 15 new monsters inspired by Greek mythology with lore, statistics, and full-page illustrations. There are new magic items, and it includes over 20 new magic items inspired by Greek mythology. Find them scattered throughout the adventure or craft them using the legendary Mithril Forge. In the tradition of our favorite RPG video games, we've got a colorful cast of villains and companion characters that players will encounter on their adventure. I gotta point out, there is a pretty cool pedigree behind the designers of this adventure. I will get to that in just a bit. This adventure sees your players growing from a band of untested warriors into famous heroes embarking on a sweeping journey across the oceans, inspired by the Odyssey and Jason and the Argonauts. This adventure combines strong narrative design with an open world. The adventure features a handful of critical story moments where players will meet important characters, confront villains, and make big choices. But for most of the adventure, they will be free to explore with clear objectives. And the players in this adventure will grow into something more than just a party of intrepid adventurers. They will be heroes in the same vein of Odysseus and Achilles, called by fate because they are destined for greatness. There is a quick two minute video which we could actually listen to. Hooray! So, why don't we kick back and give it a watch. From legendary game designer James Olin. An epic role-playing book for 5th edition. Odyssey of the Dragon Lords. Launch an epic campaign. 
Choose your epic path. Unlock new powers. Explore ancient dungeons. Discover the forgotten land. Battle new monsters. Brave the forgotten sea. And challenge the titans. With writing by New York Times best-selling author, Drew Carpishan. Odyssey of the Dragon Lords, an epic adventure book for the fifth edition of the world's greatest role-playing game. Make your Kickstarter pledge now. I gotta say, that is pretty impressive. The Kickstarter for Odyssey of the Dragon Lords launched earlier today, and uh, as of a few hours ago, about three hours ago, it is already 70% funded. It might already be 100%. You can reserve a copy of the 280 page adventure supplement in PDF for a $22 pledge as long as the early bird special is still in effect, which I believe is the first, I think, 1,000 copies in PDF. After that, it will be $25 for the PDF. Or you can also reserve the hardcover for a $55 pledge. This is through May 16th. Do you want to mention as well? that there is a free player's guide that is available over on drive through rpg when i put up the news piece on the gaminggang.com i will include a link to that if you want to check that out so uh very cool anyway let's see yes nefarious coel popped in i like that well it seems i showed up at an epic moment screw up how there's an open game license but nobody can actually say dungeons and dragons i can I do it all the time. <laughs> yep, when it's open game license, I'm always like, Dungeons and Dragons, because I'm not selling it. <laughs> like, you can sit there at the world's most popular role-playing game. I don't know, that might be open to interpretation by other people. If I say Dungeons and Dragons, people know what I'm saying. But one of the cool things about Odyssey of the Dragon Lords is... Um, the pedigree of the folks behind it, there's a lot of, they used to be with Bioware. They've worked on Knights of the Old Republic, uh, I believe tr like Dragon Age, a lot of good stuff. So artwork looks really sweet. I, I'm kind of, it's, it's kind of odd though, because it's sort of like Greek mythologically inspired, but it's not Greek mythology. So I don't know. I would be very interested in checking this out. And uh, I want to say the turnaround is supposed to be pretty quick as far as getting this out. For some strange reason, I might be way off base. I thought expected delivery was like August. So anyway, yes, as Nefarious says, looks like some pretty cool artwork, especially like the uh, kind of like Cyclopean creature that they were showing. I was like, oh. That looks kind of cool, kind of cool. All right, so that's it for the news today. So before I get into my review of Kaban Driver's Edition, I uh, want to also point out that if you are a fan of the Daily Dope, if you follow thegaminggang.com, you do know that they are both not-for-profit uh, endeavors. So... If you do like uh, my show or my website, please consider making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Lil Bub's Big Fund actually supplies uh, grant money to organizations who care for special needs animals who are awaiting adoption. So, waiting to, uh, to find their forever homes. So, like I said, if you, uh, if you dig the show, please consider, yeah, tossing a couple bucks into the fund. 100% of all monies that are raised that go into Lil Bub's big fund is awarded as grant money. That's very, very important 
for you to understand. Okay, so... All right, so Nefarious says, rule number one for Kickstarter delivery date estimates, double the time span at least. Not true. Not true. I have seen things exactly when they were promised come out. And then I've seen things that were promised that never came out that I had warned people about in the first place. But uh, usually... I have found with, yes, Pinky's roaming around down here again. What is with you, Pinky? It's like every show, you got to come down here for a couple of minutes, make a bunch of noise, then you go get something to eat. And you never see her. You will never see her. So, and the very says, I have never seen something deliver on time. I was about to say, usually you'll find things that deliver on time are normally going to be role-playing game related a lot of times when they they simply need to just get the artwork and stuff like that that's what i find a lot um some game companies are, are better than others as far as delivering on time some some do deliver but tend to be late as far as getting stuff out so uh expect the worst and you won't be disappointed yeah exactly i i'm still you know I'm still not a huge proponent of Kickstarter. I'm just not. Um, too many people have gotten burned over the years. So, anyway, moving right along. So, today I'm going to do a bit of a how to play, as well as review Kanban Drivers Edition from Stronghold Games. It's designed by Vital Lacerda, with artwork provided by Naomi Robinson and Vital Lacerda. The game is for two to four players, ages 12 and up, plays in 90 minutes to two hours. <laughs> well, once you get the hang of it, that is. And it does carry an MSRP of $69.95. So let's switch on over to the other camera here. I have got it set up for the most part. I, uh, I do not have like everything all laid out here. But the first thing that I am going to point out is that this game does take up some space for you to be able to play. So because you not only got the board here, this is the game board, and I will pull this back a little bit so you can see what's hiding under my mug, which isn't a lot, isn't isn't much. But the each of the players also will have their own player board that they need to track things on. So you've got that, we've got a bunch of different tiles of uh, all various sorts we've got decks of cards so you need some serious space to uh to lay this out because this is a good sized board this board is taking over the entire well not the entire but a vast majority of the game table hey vinyl rabbit's popping in and good evening to you too vinyl rabbit so we've got the player boards. I'm going to kind of explain the layout of the board and then I'm going to kind of zoom in and I'm going to just do a very, very high level overview of the game because there are a lot of moving pieces to this game. This is, uh, like I said at the beginning of the show, to me, I, I want to say this is probably the heaviest Euro game I have ever played. Now, it's possible I played heavier, it's just nothing else popped in my head. That, and I'm not saying it's necessarily complex. It just has a lot of different things going on under the hood. No pun intended. So the premise of Kanban is automotive uh, assembly lines, basically. And each of the players actually represents an employee of an auto company. And what they're trying to do is they are trying to rise up in the company uh kind of kind of at the expense of other players other employees <laughs> so nefarious says board looks like a train wreck this board is super busy this board is really really busy uh i will completely agree with you on that uh so there are there are pluses there are minuses to this game so we've got the rule book 
rulebook has loads and loads of illustrations talking about setting up the game talking about the goal of the game beginning the game an overview of each round and then it kind of gets into the different areas of the board how to end the game final scoring different optional rules for two or three players because this is for two to four players I have to admit that um, when you're first learning, it's probably better to have all four players. But this game kind of strikes me more along the lines of if you want, if you wanted to be able to get it in in like say an hour or just over an hour, then I'd say probably go two players. So Final Rabbit says, "Oh, hey, Rob Moffat's popping in. Howdy, Rob." Good to see you. When a rep says human beings don't work in automobile companies anymore, it's all robotic. Well, you're actually not on the, <laughs> the assembly line floor. You are employees of the automotive company trying to, uh, to, you know, kind of make your way through the company. You are not down there assembling the automobiles. So I'm going to pull this down a little bit. Hopefully I don't knock a bunch of stuff over when I try to do that. So I'm just going to pull this down so I can show you what's up top on this board. Like I said, uh, not necessarily uh, cutting off a whole bunch. And I'm going to slide this back up. But this is where your scoring is going to take place. So as with many Euro games... You are going to have a track that runs around the board for your victory points, and that is exactly what this is. This is a victory point tracker. It goes around, so it goes from 0 to 100. So this area here, this area here is considered the, uh, this is the assembly line. So this is where the cars are being built, but then they actually get built and they go out onto the test track so this is the test track here we have the kind of the warehouse with all of the different parts each of these cubes of different colors represent different kinds of parts so uh so you're a robotic slave driver yeah kind of it's kind of what you're going to be doing in this game then we've got a boardroom over here we've got a design area down here We've got kind of a tracker of uh, Pinky, cut it out. We've got a different tracker that's gonna gonna show the different bonuses that each of the players are gonna end up getting. It's gonna show us also the the sort of um, the order that the players are going to take as well. <clears throat> so that's all down in here. You're gonna see there's a bunch of these discs. So we got this. I've got it just set up like there's four players. So each of the four players are going to take one of the colors, orange, blue, yellow, or purple. They're going to start off with that. And you're going to see that they we've got stacks of these all around the board. So, of course, we had it up here underneath to start off the scoring track. We've got it down here, which is for um, expertise in these various different areas. So we've got expertise here for the assembly line. We've got expertise here, that, like the warehouse is the boardroom, the design. Yeah, Pinky sounding off. Pinky's uh, quieted down now. I think she just grabbed something to eat and strolled on off. She's a strange cat. She... Oh, did I just spot her? Nah, nah, I guess not. <laughs> I thought for a second I was like, She's a strange cat. I thought I suddenly saw her out of the corner of my eye. So, uh, so we've got all of these. So we've got all these various things here. Then we've got your workers. Because this is, a, essentially, this is a worker placement game. So each of the players are going to have their meeple to represent their worker. They also will have these little, little meeples as well on this track also so for an example so this this kind of the way this track works is this would show us like the order of play for the round 
So yellow would go first, then orange, then blue, then purple. That's how it basically works. And then, depending on where they're at, the player might get some sort of a bonus. They might get a little bonus item. So they might get a bonus extra shift. They might get a, a little bonus book. A little extra book here. So there are all different items here. So I'm going to just show off a few of the different things. So we've got, for an example here, this is the test track if we only had three players. We would put that, we would actually put that on top here. We would cover that part of the board up. This is the test track if we only had two players. So there's also another side to this board. If we flip this board over, then we also have uh, another one that some sections are kind of grayed out. But this is this is the area. This is like for the full game, you would be using this board. So essentially what the whole process of this is, is as I mentioned, you're an employee at an automotive company. You're trying to master different aspects of the company itself. Kanban is actually a... Um, a type of manufacturing where all there's all these different things going on at once. So as opposed to say like an assembly line, like uh, let's say like a, an old Ford assembly line, where you had a car just moving down the assembly line. One person did this, one person did that, blah, blah, blah. In modern manufacturing, it's all these different things going on at one time. So uh, Kanban Skynet, there you go. Yeah, the automated national defense AI in the Terminator movies. Somebody was like, Skynet? What are you talking about, Skynet? What's Skynet? Skynet equals the bad robot. So, all right. So we've got uh, we've got a plant manager. She's like middle management. And we can have her be nice or we can have her be mean. When you're first learning how to play the game, you are going to want her to be nice. Let me grab this out here. So the game comes with, as I showed, we've got the player boards. We also have a couple of player aids. So we've got the factory manager. And she can either be nice or mean. And if, essentially what the difference is, the nice manager rewards you for being ahead of the other players in different things. The mean manager penalizes you for being behind other players for things. Then we also have a breakdown of what the, how the meetings work, the end of week scoring, and our final scoring as well. So what goes on in this game? And like I said, once again, I am not going to go diving really, really deep into this. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get these designs of different vehicles. I can fill this up with a few more. Just for the heck of it. These are considered the vehicle designs here. Ah, too many of that. There we go. So we've got five different styles of vehicles. And this is one of the differences with the driver's edition as opposed to the original. I think it's uh, I think it's called Kanban Automotive Revolution or something like that. Is the meeples that we've got, the tokens we've got for the for the vehicles. So before they were all just the same kind of vehicle and different colors. Now we have different shapes of vehicles. So this is kind of a, it's kind of a, a, a sports car. And it's kind of an SUV. And this is kind of a, a little like Pinto. <laughs> it's, it's a little, uh, little teeny weeny uh, cheapo car. Then uh, this is kind of a, yeah, just kind of a coupe. Kind of inexpensive coupe. And then we've got like really high tech, cool sports car. So these are the different kinds that we've got. Then we're going to have vehicles that are popular. So types of vehicles that are popular at the moment, because that's what we're going to want to try to design for. We're going to want to try to push through vehicles from the assembly line that we have actual designs for as well as vehicles that are in demand that are popular 
This area here is our parts department. This is kind of the warehouse I was talking about before. So each of these cubes represents a part of these different styles. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Oops, a little too far, didn't wanna cut that off. Okay, so this area here is the different parts. So as I mentioned, this is a worker placement game. So uh, do you have hubcaps for a 78 hatchback Pinto? Random dude in convenience store. Jeez. Wait a second, is that from a movie? I don't know, maybe not. Maybe I'm just thinking it is. Uh, okay, so anyway, so we've got the different cards for like the manager and you'll actually have these telling you what you're trying to get. And you'll see that there's seats marked on this. What the seats are good for is the seats are good for when you're in the boardroom because you'll have a weekly meeting and the weekly meeting is kind of a way for you to, to score victory points as you're going through the game. That's, and you'll get like bonuses as well. So we do see the, the victory point totals. We've also got kind of like secret, kind of like secret kind of uh, bonuses that you're looking to get. So you'll basically start off and each of the players are going to place their worker in an area that corresponds with uh, it's from the clerks. Oh yeah, that's right. I wasn't even supposed to be here today. Just like, uh, just, if you've seen how the movie is actually supposed to end. Uh, yeah, kind of a downer ending. Because Dante actually gets shot and killed. <laughs> by, by, uh, by a couple of guys who are trying to rob the store. And then his final words are, I wasn't even supposed to be here today. So, so if we see here, see these little areas here, these are shifts. So these are shifts and effectively what they are, are they, they're basically action points. So yeah, yeah, people hated the ending. So that's why they got rid of it. Not very good for a comedy. No, no, not at all. Um, yeah, Clerks is one of my favorite. Mall Rats, I personally think is completely underrated. I thought Mall Rats was awesome when I first saw it. In fact, I saw it on uh, VHS and then called a couple of my friends up. And I was like, "What are you guys doing?" They're like, "Nothing." And I'm like, "Get on over here, man! Bring some beer. <laughs> We're watching this movie because this movie is hysterical." Okay, so, so for an example here, this is like two shifts this is three shifts and when you place your your worker you're laying claim to the area that's connected to it so for an example here these two action locations are for this area here okay over here that's for the assembly line We've got over here, this is for the uh, track, the uh, test track. Why the hell can I, why couldn't I remember test? It's like test track for crying out loud. Over here, it's for designs and getting a little bonus stuff. So we see that we've got this area here, this is for the meeting room. So what players will do is they each take turns in the turn order we've got down here that you can't see anymore that I've zoomed out of. So we have, we've got orange, I'm sorry, we got yellow, orange, blue, purple. So if I were the first player and I, I would go, okay, so I wanna get some designs. Uh, the part where the guy postulates his girlfriend just dumped him because he farted when... Yeah, yeah. That was pretty good. Uh, I, I still use the term dirt mall. I, I say that all the time. A, like dirt mall. I, or I, I kind of adapted it to bars, too. I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's the dirt bar. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, if you went in there and the floor was just covered in dirt, you wouldn't be shocked. So 
for an example, let's say the yellow player says, yeah, they want to do this. They want to get designs. And then the orange player would say, oh, okay, I want to do that too. Well, now get to the point where these two action spots are closed. So the blue and the purple player are probably going to be like, oh, okay, well, guess we'll go up here and go over here. So when you're actually resolving the actions, you go from left to right. If you're the first one to, to lay claim to one of these areas, you're going to get fewer actions than the person who arrives second. So for an example here, this would be two actions. Those actions can basically be either take the parts from one of these areas, and there are decks of car or cards that will play like so. That's going to tell you, okay, so what, what are we restocking parts for? And you can actually even turn this upside down so you can swap it around. So it's either like this side like this or this side like that. You get to choose when, uh, when the parts are getting restocked. So what you can do is you can say, okay, blue player here decides, all right, they want these two parts and then they want to increase their expertise. So they could say, okay, fine, I'm increasing my expertise. Those would be the two actions. And then they'd be done. Uh, yeah, Dirt Mall was the flea market. Purple player would do the same thing. So they'd say, okay, well, they, maybe they decide, well, I want these and I want these. Now remember, you've got your player boards. So this is where you store your items is on your player board. So for an example, you would go like so. So you can't have like tons and tons of parts. You gotta be able to utilize these parts to build these different vehicles. So anyway, uh, then this is where you'll, you'll keep some of your, you keep your designs. So for an example, you've got, once you get your designs, going to look like that and you actually this would be a bonus part for getting that design so and of course you use the parts to build the different vehicles so get that back out of the way uh so as an example here we've got these two players are looking to get design so what they could do here is well they could say all right uh i'm gonna spend one of my actions i'm gonna get a new design and I'm going to move up my expertise. So the yellow player does that. And then the orange player says, well, fine. I'm going to just take two designs. Because remember, they're going to get three. So actually, the purple person would have been able to move up because they had three too. And what they could also decide to do is they could decide to increase their expertise. Or they could bank away one of their shifts. So one of their action points they could bank away to be able to use it on a future turn, like so. So they would be able to gain an extra action in a later round. Uh, you can never have more than four because you can't be working like, you know, all the time. Uh, the origins of Skynet, it's all clear now. Yep, it all came from this. It all came from Kanban. Kanban design style. So anyway, so what you're basically trying to do, like I said, I'm going to try to die, try to keep this like higher level without diving all the way down in here. Is you can, you you're kind of balancing what what you're doing here on the floor and then here in the in the the boardroom essentially. Because you want to get these seats. You want to earn these seats. Because what these seats do is they, they allow you to, I guess, essentially we'll say, you get to share ideas in the boardroom. And then you get to spend the, sh the, the chairs to get these ideas is basically how it works. And of course, they're, they're worth victory points when you're doing that. But you're also trying to get vehicles. 
So what you're trying to do with the vehicles is you're trying to get the vehicles built so they get pushed down this these tracks into the test track. So as an example, if we get a, uh, another yellow vehicle built, right? Maybe maybe I'm trying to trying to score yellow vehicles. If I got another yellow vehicle built, it would push this out just like so. Then let's say for an example, a red vehicle got built. So what actually happens here is the vehicles will push each other. So for an example, if another red came out, then this actually will push these down. So then they would be like that. So as these get pushed further down, and you can see we've got two, one, and one, but as we, we push down, we're going to end up on the track. We end up on the test track, and we're, we need to push this along and push these around so that these vehicles get approved. It's basically what's going on with the test track, okay? So we're basically, everything's, everything's pushing stuff down. It's all... It's all kind of just, these are all just a line of different things pushing each other down. And what you're trying to do, say, so for an example, you're trying to get your vehicles made and at the same time kind of prevent your other players from getting their stuff made. So, of course, once you get the vehicles made, then you, you're awarded the vehicles. So... So you're trying to do that to score your victory points, and you're trying to score different seats to be able to sit here in the boardroom and be able to claim these ideas, move further up here, and score victory points. So when you get to the boardroom, you'll have... I'll show you what, what do you do in the meetings. Make one card from your hand available to everyone. Remember players are going to have these different cards. These these are what you're trying to achieve for victory points. So, but they're not open to everybody. So, move one of your face-up seats on any face-up card in order to score it. See? Just like so. Uh, pass. Only if you've played your hand card, you can still speak later in the meeting. Uh, once everybody passes consecutively, the meeting is done. Turn any un unused seats face down to their spaces. Discard all face-up performance goals. Each player places one or two cards face down. Draw two new cards. So you always have three of these cards in your hand that you're trying to score. And then you'll move your meeting on the track here. You've got your end-of-the-week scoring. So for each car in your garage... Count the upgrades to that model because you're making upgrades to these models. This is a model. These are models. These are models. So every time you've got a new one that's completed, that's been an upgrade. So you're going to earn two points for each upgrade you make. One point for each upgrade someone else made for the cars in your garage. So what you're going to finally end up doing is you are going to end up moving to... You're going to keep an eye on this track here and this track here. So you're going to keep an eye on the test track and you're going to keep a, an eye on the weekly meetings. So once one of these is at three and the other is at two, that's going to trigger the end of the game. So then you've got your final scoring. So you have the final goals tile, which is, which are these. Once again, these are kind of secret too. Uh, hours bank for every shift that you've banked away that you've saved. Then you've got tiles on your board. So you've got the books. You've got uh, parts vouchers, which are, all right, where'd they go? Oh, right here. That's a pouch. 
parts voucher, which is basically any part, counts as any part. And then your seats, which are these. So you're also going to have uh, each car in your garage gets scored. You score your designs that you've earned as well. And then your training tracks, which you're maybe not going to see it so well. Let's see. Yeah, maybe you can see this one up here. See, it says three. I'm sorry, five, three, and one. So whoever is the highest. And whenever you pass by this little area here, you get a bonus. You're going to get a little bonus there. You're considered to be qualified or, you know, certified, I guess we'll say in this area but say for an example it was something like this so the orange player would get five victory points the blue player would get three the yellow player would get one and the purple player would get nothing so there's a lot of different ways for you to score victory points and thankfully the track is here for you to move along now there there's ways to be penalized too so keep that in mind because you've got the manager and the manager will actually move around the board. The manager only starts off in her office, but then as the game moves along, the manager moves around to different areas on the board to see what's going on in the various areas. And as I mentioned, remember, we've got the different modes of play. We got the nice mode and then we've got the mean mode. So, uh, so in essence, like I said, you're trying to balance getting designs, getting those designs to the test track so you can get the upgrades, so you can add those vehicles to your garage on your, on your card here. At the same time, you're trying to score the points off these cards too, because of being, having seats, scoring seats for the weekly meeting. So it's it's kind of interesting how all of these things kind of work together. So you're, everybody starts off by going, okay, well, we need designs. So the players are gonna try to get different designs. You can only have so many designs on your sheet, on your, on your player card. Then you're gonna be looking at getting parts and the parts are always being uh, resupplied because you've got a whole bunch of these cubes See, we've got, we've still got a bunch of vehicles here. Got a bunch of the cubes here. So one thing uh, I do want to mention, though, is just because you've got a yellow, yellow player token does not mean that you have any affiliation with yellow tool, yellow parts, I should say, or yellow vehicles. Uh, that confused one of the, one of the players when we were playing. Hey, all right, Nefarious, thanks for popping by. Uh, I'll see you later. Uh, I'm all, almost uh, wrapping this up uh, in a couple of minutes anyway. Because I, like I said, I, if, I, if I sit here and walk through the entire thing, just the, the walkthrough is going to be over an hour. I can tell you that right now. Uh, that's why I'm trying to kind of give you an overview of the game itself. So what, what essentially is going to happen is the players are all going to try to score the various different designs. Then you need the parts. Once you've got the parts for the vehicles, then you can put them in the assembly line and they, they'll be pushing each other down, down these tracks. Then they're gonna get onto the test track and you can only have four vehicles behind the pace car. So uh, as these are moving down, you can knock people off of the test track as well. So that's another way you kind of kind of screw your neighbor, play a little screw your neighbor there. This is definitely not a cooperative game by any stretch of the imagination. So, and then uh, once you get to every week, you'll have the meeting, then you'll do your meeting, and then you're gonna just kind of rinse and repeat again. So you're either gonna go around the track three times and have the meeting twice, or you're gonna have the three meetings and go around the track a couple of times. So. Uh, Robert Moffat's wondering what's on War Game Wednesday. I will tell you uh, that in just a moment when I finish up uh, the review here. So that's kind of how you play Kanban. So what are my thoughts about the game? Uh, Component-wise, I think it's great. Yes, 
the board is kind of odd. Uh, but once you understand what goes where, and like I said, I didn't fill everything out here. Because, you know, you got stuff that's supposed to go in all these various different areas here. And I figured I'm not going to necessarily be covering every aspect. So I don't necessarily need to fill in every little tile or token into every spot. But uh, I think the quality of uh, the components is really nice. Cards are fine. I mean, they're smaller cards, but they are nicely, nicely done. So uh, component quality on those are really nice. The tiles, the tiles and tokens are nice and thick. I get a kick out of the various different kinds of little uh, like car meeples, little car tokens there. Thought those were kind of cool too. Uh, so I think component wise, everything's really nice. I like how we've got different stuff for like the numbers of players. We can change stuff up for the number of players. We can flip this board over. It's a different board as well. As Robert's pointing out here, artwork's important. The artwork's nice. Uh, there's not tons of it. I mean, you know, it's just on the board, on some of the cards. So uh, thematically, strangely enough, you do kind of feel <laughs> like you're somebody working for an automotive company who's trying to cover all of the bases and never has enough time to do everything. And that you kind of have a boss, even though you've got a friendly boss, at least nice mode is how we were playing. Uh, the boss is still hovering over your shoulder. Uh, we have not played the mean mode. We haven't played the mean mode at all uh, because, I don't know, it seemed a little cruel <laughs> to us because I'll be the first to admit, I understand what was going on with this game. I cannot say that the other members of the gang who were playing could say the same thing. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I wanted to discuss the components while uh, the camera was still showing them off because, like I said, I think they're really, really nice. Uh, for a game that carries a $69.95 uh, MSRP, I think it's really good, really nice. Um, so component quality, big, big thumbs up. The game itself, as I mentioned before, it uh, it's like the weightiest Euro game I've encountered. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure, unless there's something I've played long, long ago that I, I couldn't uh, kind of wrap my head around at all. But um, not everything clicked right away. Uh, I have to admit that when I went through the rule book, read through the rule book, things still weren't very clear. Now, I don't know if I'm going to blame the rule book on that or if it's because I don't tend to play tons of Euro games um, or at least really meaty Euro games. Maybe that's possibly it. So I did actually watch a couple of videos, uh, how to play videos. Um, when I busted it out at uh, my brother's house and Cameron and the gang played there, we played four players. We've played twice. That's why it's taken so long for me to get this review out because um, Cameron and I, well, Cameron's pretty good at figuring it out. Um, but the other players that we've brought on to play it they just seem to have a really kind of hard time figuring it out, making things click. So um, that's not a knock against the game. Like I said, uh, most of the gang are not Euro game players. Uh, I've busted some stuff out, but uh, they're not big Euro game players. They're more, you know, Amer American style, you know, very heavy thematic games, uh, a lot of action kind of stuff. But... Um, I liked it. I, I think it's a very cool game. I think it probably plays two or three players especially well. I would say when you're first learning to play the game, try to go with four players because I think I think it's easier for everybody to kind of grasp when you've got more players. That being said, once you have a good understanding of the game, because really it kind of just comes down to placing your worker and choosing what you're doing in that area trying to earn your bonuses, trying to uh, get your qualifications in the various different areas. But uh, I have to say that, uh, yeah, I, I think it's pretty pretty good. And once you get a grasp of it, 
Yeah, if you want to bust it out for like a, a quick hour, I can see finishing this game up with two players who know what they're doing in about an hour. Uh, only real drawbacks that I can I can throw out here. Uh, it takes a while to set up. It it does take a good amount of time setting the game up. Like I said at the beginning of the show, we're not talking Arkham Horror setup time, but it does take a bit of time to set up. And uh, I I think the rules could have been a little bit clearer. I think just a little bit clearer. But uh, all in all, I really did I did like it. As I mentioned, a couple of the, the members of the gang were not fans, but uh, but I do like it. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I certainly give Kanban Driver's Edition an 8.7 out of 10. So there you have it for the review. Try to, because uh, I, I was like, gosh, is this, if I go through all this on this game, it's going to be like an hour and a half show. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to do an hour and a half show tonight. So, uh, what is coming up on other episodes later on this week? So, tomorrow, Rob Moffat was asking, what's on tomorrow's show? I am reviewing Ghost Front for Old School Tactical Volume 2 from Flying Pig Games. This is basically Belgium 1944. And then, on Thursday's show, I am reviewing Dark War Rebooted which is also another Mark H. Walker-related <laughs> game. So, uh, in fact, he had just emailed me today asking, hey, have you had a chance to, to check out Dark War yet? And I said, yes. Review's coming up on Thursday's show. And then on Friday's show, I am reviewing Judge Dread: The Cursed Earth from Osprey Games. Then next Monday... I am going to be reviewing Forum Trajanum, which is another Euro from Stronghold Games. This one is not as um, mental heavy lifting as Kanban Driver Edition. Hey, Kabuki Kids popping in right at the end of the show. So, all right. So anyway, that is it for today's show. As I like to always point out, when you're not watching the Daily Dope or other videos on the Gaming Gang channel, please visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. By now you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff Macklear. I'll be back tomorrow with my Ghost Front review. And until then, if you are watching live and you would join me in chat, thank you very much for taking some time out tonight to keep me company. And if you're watching this after the fact, thanks for watching. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you liked this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.